Okay, welcome to a micro video uh, in which we explore the theoretical relationship between marginal utility and the demand curve. First, a quick reminder of the concept of marginal utility. It's defined as the change in total utility or satisfaction that you get from consuming an extra unit of a good or a service. So here's a simple numerical example of marginal utility as we consume extra glasses of beer our total utility goes up, but the key is the marginal utility, the next unit consumed. Initially, it's rising, peaks at 20 for the second and the third unit, but marginal utility starts to fall with the fourth drink consumed. And this, of course, is when the law of diminishing returns kicks in. By the sixth drink, only three extra units of utility are enjoyed. Well, economists uh, in the neoclassical school argued that utility could be measured in a quantifiable way. Others, of course, disagree. Just for the moment, let's assume that consumers can attach a value to the satisfaction they get from consuming extra units. The marginal utility they receive will therefore influence their willingness to pay for something. And if there are diminishing marginal returns, then your willingness to pay, we can assume, will also decline. Hence, the demand curve for a product will be downward sloping. Price and quantity demanded will be inversely related. <clears throat> Pardon me. An assumption of classical economics is that the price that you're willing to pay is a fair approximation to the utility you get. Hence, the demand curve becomes the marginal benefit curve which is an approximation to the marginal utility curve. So, for example, uh, as the utility from consuming extra units of pizza goes down, consumers are willing only to pay a lower price, hence a downward sloping demand curve. For one product, be it pizza, uh, the optimum level of consumption is to consume a quantity of pizza where the marginal utility equals the price. It wouldn't make sense if you're getting four pounds worth of satisfaction um, to, to pay eight pounds, for example. Let's just develop this concept of utility into that of marginal private benefit. It's the benefit to you as the consumer from the next unit consumed. And we're also going to bring in marginal private cost, which is the internal cost to the consumer buying and then consuming the next unit, indicated in this example by, by the price. So if the price of a drink, let's say, is £5, uh, the benefit cost calculation indicates that consumers will be willing and able to, pay, to buy two, two drinks. However, a fall in price, of course, causes an expansion of demand. So if a, if a club, for example, reduces a happy hour, brings the price of a drink down to £2, that changes the cost-benefit calculation and that reduces the marginal cost of consumption and encourages consumers to move down their demand curve. And of course, the extent to which consumers are stimulated to consume more depends on the elasticity of demand and how quickly uh, marginal utility falls with extra consumption. Our demand curve, therefore, is derived from our marginal utility. That is the takeaway point from this video. And if a good or service gives us more satisfaction, if it becomes increasingly fashionable, then our marginal utility, and hence our demand curve, will shift to the right. So at the same price of £5 per drink, more units are being demanded, reflecting the increased private benefit.